Rather lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around Arsenal this week. Like I said yesterday, it's going to be a very, very huge week in terms of incomings and also in terms of outgoing because the incomings we're trying to make uh, directly depend on how much we can sell and how much we can actually move on the players that not um that are not in part of edu's and Mikel Arteta's plans as well so Nuno Tavares is very close to joining Atalanta Atalanta have sent in their intermediaries to London and that deal should be closed today Hexa Bellerin is very close to joining Real Betis as well Talksport are saying are claiming that Arsenal have concerns over Yuri Telemann's physicality that is the worst piece of journalism I've seen in the past month or so. You cannot say Arsenal have tracked a player for a year and now they're 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 looking uh, at other players because of his, uh, his physicality. We talk about that. Cody Gakpo is available. Yes, there is that kind of um a condition that they want to sell him after playing Monaco in the UEFA Champions uh, Champions qualifiers, but he is available, and we'll talk about Tinkola Pepe, Ban Leno, and what Freddie Paxton has said on our next moves. All that and more coming up in this show. Hit the like button for me. Subscribe to the podcast. And also, um, in the comment section, let me know. Talk to me about Hector Bellerin and Ainsley Martinez. Now, both of them can play as right backs. Of course, both of them are right backs, uh, naturally. But also, we have Cedric Suarez as well. So, if we were to keep one of those three... Who would you actually keep? Bellerin has had a very, very uh, bad history with Arsenal. A throw, um, uh, one of the right backs that ca that cannot actually take a throw in. Uh, Ainsley Martinez has failed to pin down himself to a position uh, or pin a, a pin down a position. He cannot do that. He wants to play as a central midfielder. Mikel Arteta thinks he's a right back, um, and so do other managers. Which, uh, w apart from Tomiyasu, who should be our other right back if we do not go for one uh, in the market? Is it Cedric? Is it Bellerin? Is it Ainsley Martinez? Because I'm really struggling uh, to keep one of them. I really feel none of them is that good. But anyway, let's get into the content. Let's start off with that talk spot um, and their claims on Yuri Telemans. Now, they've said Yuri Telemans' physicality is a concern for Arsenal. And that is why they have actually not, uh, not made a move. And they've also said that Arsenal are looking at other um, cheaper options. And that is where they actually get it wrong. So, first and foremost, they they've said that Arsenal have concerns over Yuri Telemans' physicality. I don't agree to that. I do not actually uh, think they have even thought before uh, publishing this information. But look, you cannot have concerns over a player's physicality when you've tracked them for a, a full year. You cannot have uh, concerns over a, a, a player's physicality when you have talked to them and had a, you know a deal agreed with them six months ago, five months ago, eight months ago. It, that that is no explanation as to why Arsenal have not had uh, have not made a move for your elements. So for me, that is absolute lazy journalism. I think what talks about are trying to do here is they're trying to justify why Arsenal have not made a move for your elements. They know we agreed a deal with the player. They know we've been in constant communication uh, with Yuri Tillemans' entrance. And they also know the player is 100% locked on a move to Arsenal. But they do not know why we've actually not made a move. So they've come out and concocted this kind of uh, uh, you know, agenda. They, they do not want him because of the physicality. But, you know, what is interesting is if you think about physicality, and the players are and the other players are still interested in the likes of Lucas Paqueta. Paqueta is also, is also known um a player that you feel can can meet the physical demands of uh, of the Premier League. Yuri Tillemans has played in that position that we want to recruit him in uh in the Premier League for six years. And uh, for four years, not six years, but four, four years, ever since signing from Monaco. And we actually wanted him. Six years ago, when he was signing for Leicester City, when he was playing for Monaco, we wanted him under a very, very different manager. So don't tell me that two managers look at the same player and they feel, we want to sign him. He's a very, very good player. He would suit into our project. But then physicality is a problem. I don't think uh, Eurotelemans has physicality problems. I think his problem is concentration. 
He needs to concentrate more so that he doesn't lose the ball. Uh, the, the, the ball. He needs to keep the ball better, just like Bernardo Silva, because that is the role Mikel Arteta wants to uh, to deploy him in. That kind of um, uh, you know, th that kind of player that utilizes the pockets of space. But you need to be a better ball keeper. So if they told us that. Arsenal looking for a better ball keeper in Ruben Neves, uh, in Saj Milinkovic Savic. Probably I would understand, but saying that physicality issues and then we are interested in Lucas Paqueta doesn't make any sense. Now, the other point they also put across is the money that they want someone cheaper, seriously 20 to 25 million. How do you justify the Arsenal looking for someone uh, cheaper in the market? Look. All the options that we are actually interested in, apart from uh, Yuri Tillemans, Paqueta is 35 million euros, uh, Saj Milinkov Savic is 65 million pounds, and, uh, and Ruben Neves is uh, around 75 million pounds. It doesn't make any sense to say that Arsenal are exploring other cheaper options when all the players that we are linked with, other than Yuri Tillemans, are actually more expensive. So, in my, you know, in my opinion, Talk sport, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't make any sense. It's um it's the worst piece of journalism I've ever seen in the past you know, I've seen in the past thirty days. Yeah, I've seen a, a, a you know, I've seen quite a, uh, a, poor, uh, a, a quite a number of poor ones, but that was bad. Now, according to Rudy Galetti, Arsenal will have to wait, of course, um, until August to sign Cody Gakpo. But the interesting update of, uh, uh, update from him is that PSV will not stand in the way of Cody Gakpo if he decides to move on. They'll be asking for around 35, 40 million euros um, in the sale of the player. We understand that Cody Gakpo and Jared Bowen are two players that Arsenal are trying to sign uh, this summer in terms of that forward role. Um, Cody Gakpo has been there. Uh, interest has been genuinely there for some time, according to the Telegraph. We wanted him ever since March. Jared Bowen, I'm not really sure when this interest started, but we reported about it in June. We also talked about it uh, heavily in July. I'm not really sure um, if Arsenal really, really going to make a bid for Jared Bowen. But with Kadi Gakpo, you think about all the, you, you think about all the conditions to this deal, the facilitations to the deal, and you feel it's one that Arsenal could actually go for. 35, 40 million euros, that is the budget we are working with. Uh, a player that can be that versatile on the front line. Um, again, that is what we are looking for. And also, when you think, of, when you think about Cody Gakpo and his ability to influence decisions on that left-hand side of the pitch, I'm not really sure if Martinelli is going to be um, a regular for Mikel Arteta. You never know. You know, I think with Mikel, with, uh, with, with um, uh, Pep Guardiola, you never sure you're gonna start a game unless you're that good for, for example uh last campaign for manchester city i think it was kevin de who, who who had that guarantee bernardo silva as well and then the goalkeeper the rest of the team could be interchanged and, and probably your cancel because i don't think uh they had anyone to play in the position the rest of the team can be interchanged as much as he can michael is taking slightly a very different di direction i've seen him play with a constant 11 for nine consecutive games 10 consecutive games and i remember saying i remember myself saying uh let's campaign that one of the achievements we had was having a stable structure and a stable 11. So, Cody Gakpo could be that guy that you want him to come, you want him to come, uh, influence decisions in terms of, um, uh, you know, just making the manager have a headache in terms of who plays uh, and also select, uh, selection problems. So, Cody Gakpo, I love him. I definitely want him. And I would, I, I would love to sign him and beat Newcastle because when Newcastle signed Bruno Guimaraes, they did an introduction video um, showing that they had won the transfer race against Arsenal. So if we can beat them to Cody Gakpo, I'd want us to do some revenge. Obviously, I, don't do, I do not do the videos uh, at Arsenal. Now, in terms of outgoings, we are also having some breakthroughs. But for, before we, uh, before that, Freddie Baxter has said that a couple of people at Arsenal would love our next signing to be a central midfielder. But Edu and Mikel Arteta are still pushing the decision to be a forward. So we are trying to sign um, a forward next, not a central midfielder. Your Tillemans highly appreciated but a couple of outgoings have to happen uh, before we can actually make that move so a couple of outgoings in the midfield Ainsley probably um Ainsley Bellerin and and Torreira that is that is what I'm looking at I think if those three move out then we'll be able to sign in uh, a midfielder now Arsenal have asked for 25 million pounds in Nicola Pepe now interestingly 
Sevilla only interested in um are only willing to spend 15 million pounds on um Nicola Pepe. And remember what I said in the the last time we talked about Nicola Pepe. I said get this money and run. There is no way Arsenal will get 25 30 million pounds um in the sale of Nicola Pepe. I think that's a huge loss that Arsenal will have to live with around 50 million pounds um or around I think it's around 50 or 45 um million pounds in terms of losses that we are actually going to income. But Leeds United, Sevilla and Leicester City are all interested uh in Nicola Pepe, but uh, 15 million pounds is what uh, they are willing to spend. In my opinion, Take it and run. I don't think I don't think his market value is actually rising. It is actually uh, dropping. And the fact that we bought him at a time when his you know his market value for me was around thirty, and we bought him for seventy two million euros, that is when we got it wrong. His market value is never gonna is is, is not is never gonna go higher than um you know his peak at uh, a little metropole. So it is either you take the fifteen million pounds and run. Or you terminate his contract. I, I, look, we've all already agreed on this channel. It is not that bad. We cannot terminate um, his contract. I don't think our relationship between him uh, and the club is actually that bad. So, in my opinion, take that money and run. 15 million pounds. Um, for Nicola Pepe as a player, Sevilla would be a very, very good fit. I think going to, to a less competitive... Okay, not less competitive, but um, I think less physical league like the la liga just uh, suits his style of play lots of time on the ball huge spaces to run into um weak defenders to run against uh to run against um and i think he's you know he's got he has that time to do his trickery in the premier league it is too physical it is too fast you need the brains i don't think he's ha you know he has that uh you need the speed he doesn't have that you need a lot of um you know technical ability he doesn't have that. And that's why he cannot uh, thrive in the Premier League. But players like Saka and players like Martin Odegaard can. Because Odegaard is clever. You know, he's, he's very, very clever, very bright, brilliant. He's got, you know, he has that kind of uh, uh, you know, technical brilliance around him. So he can use the spaces. He can manipulate the spaces. Nicola Pepe cannot. So for me, actually, I wanted him to go to Germany uh, or to Italy. Because when, if, if, if he went to Italy uh, to a club like AC Milan... I think he might just do well, just like Rafa Liao. He might just do well. Now, I'm not trying to compare him to Rafa Liao. Liao is a very, very quality player. But I'm trying to say, if he goes there, he could give them something. Now, also, Nuno Tavares is going to be closing his deal to FC Atalanta today. Now, intermediaries are, are, are in the UK from Atalanta in London to try to negotiate this deal. Arsenal have been told they will be given an, uh, an option to buy sorry atlanta have been told they'll be given an option to buy if the money is actually um unrefutable now arsenal went around 40 million euros uh in nuno Tavares, and according to what i've seen Mikel Arteta does not want to sell it is very different for a club to say we do not want to include an obligation or buy option and it's another thing for a club to say we are we are skeptical we do not actually want to sell so in my opinion they do not want to sell they really do not want to sell um atlanta know how good this guy is and they're willing to go all in to sign him so a loan deal is close we are waiting to see the detail is it going to be with an obligation to buy is it going to be with an option um uh, to buy and then finally i think hector blaring will also be going to real betis uh real betis are playing a couple of cards they're trying to sign house from um uh house from leon what a signing that one would be i mean many people have been ranking the signings of the summer we'll do that on 90 more but i think this one could be one that real betis fans are not expecting they've already signed nabil fakil from leon i don't know how they do it but nabil fakil in his prime Wanted by Arsene Wenger hugely, wanted by a couple of huge clubs, and he ended up at Real Betis. And now they want to take House Moa. Please, Arsenal, don't let this happen. Sign House Moa for me. It's gonna be a bargain. But anyway, um, if if, if Real Betis sign House Moa, and then William Cavalier moves to Lyon, and then they sell another player to Nottingham Forest, they'll be able to sign Bellerin. Does it make any sense? Yes, it does. But it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of a, a lot of 
ripple effect right so instead of following the ripple effect let us wait at the end of the river when the ripples arrive and then we'll know whether bellerin joins rehabitis or not leno is very close to going to fulham uh arsenal are apparently reducing on the asking price from 13 million pounds to around 11 yeah it makes some sense but um fulham never wanted to pay that much and they've been looking at uh neto i think that's one of the reasons why arsenal have gone okay you're looking at another goalkeeper we'll give you this one at um a card price that is it for me this morning i think it's a lot of action but later in the afternoon we'll look at uh, that game against brentford and also we play severe very very soon in the emirates cup uh we'll speak about all those games